Hey everyone, in this video we're taking a look at a used shipping container that was converted into a beautiful living space. The shipping container is 40 feet long and 8 feet wide and it's a fully functional one bedroom garden suite in the backyard of a house in Victoria, BC. We're going to meet up with the builder to get a full tour, so let's check it out. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. We'll tell you more about them at the end, plus what you need to get a great discount on their VPN service. This is the Clovelly model. It's our prototype model. It's the first garden suite that's been allowed in City of Victoria using a shipping container. It's a high cube, which means it's nine foot six high, 40 foot long and eight foot wide. So this is the living room. We placed the couch on this wall and kind of gave it a little bit of a division between here and the kitchen. Uh, we've got birch wallpaper on the wall um, just for some texture and some depth to the room. Um, and we've got the TV on this wall. And then you kind of look out the window to the front yard with that full height window and all that light coming through and this height, it's, it doesn't feel cramped in here at all. It's quite spacious. We didn't really go all out with putting shelving all over the place just yet. We kind of left that up to whoever's living here to uh, figure out what works best for them in the space. But there's lots of options. We put the two end tables in uh, as a start point because they're important for your drinks and your phones. There's two plugs, power points, uh, just below those two tables. So they're usable for charging stations and whatnot. This table, it was made out of leftover wood, but the, the dimension of it was actually the key because we didn't want to enclose this, this walkthrough space, but we wanted to make it usable. It's probably a two person table for dining and then maybe one person for a laptop or a workstation. You can move your stool around and sit there and on a laptop, it's kind of a nice outlook to the garden. We're pretty proud of the kitchen. We tried to maximize the size of the kitchen because we figure if you have guests in a small home, you want to be able to use the kitchen as a, almost like a social space. Storage is the other dual purpose for the kitchen. We've got lots of cabinetry, but yeah, the look, it's kind of like a West Coast modern uh, industrial look that we went for um, to match the container and the decks and where we are um, in our surrounding environment. The countertop, this stone came from a quarry up island. Um, we're pretty proud of using like as many locally sourced materials as we can. As you'll see, all the wood outside is locally sourced. We've got um, an industrial sink. Um, it's a single bowl. It does the job. It's nice and deep. Um, it doesn't take up too much counter space. We've got a microwave hood fan, which is vented up through and out to the outside. Um, so dual purpose there. Um, we've got an induction cooktop to burner and we've got the, uh, we managed to squeeze an oven in down here. And then on this end, we've got the fridge, um, which is a 24 inch fridge. This is where our pantry is located. So again, part of the big kitchen idea is to create storage. So, um, you know, this is more than enough pantry for one or two people. And you've got all these, all these drawers down here, which also function for the use of the kitchen. We squeezed our laundry in here and this works quite well. Uh, we've got a 24 inch washer dryer in there. Lots of storage up there. That's just a big open space. Yeah, for the windows, we went with a higher end central window. We basically put in as many windows as possible because we felt the natural light coming into a small space is so beneficial for many reasons. You kind of loan space from the outdoors and bring it in. So when you're standing in here, you feel like that deck out there is part of this room. Um, so spatially, it's really important. From a light perspective, um, there's an abundance of light in here, which is amazing. You might need to buy some blinds, um, <laughs> standard um, for privacy. And as far as solar heating that people are generally concerned with in a unit like this, the roof structure that we've put on this has overhangs. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to, with a shipping container, to put something on top it takes that drip line out and away from the building so you can actually use that space out there as covered space. More importantly, it doesn't heat up. You can control the climate in here a lot better if you don't have the sun just baking it every day. So we've moved into the bathroom. We've got a full four foot shower. It's four foot by 32 inches deep, which is 
kind of nice. We used a beautiful, beautiful porcelain tile actually. So this toilet is a regular flush toilet. We've got an awning window which opens out. We've got a recirc fan which is always on and vented to the outside. This cabinet here is our mechanical cabinet. So in here we have our hot water tank. We also have a heat trace cable um, which is required because we've got a gap below the unit. Uh, you need to send heat trace down with your pipe work to make sure it doesn't freeze. Basically you have your internet station in here um, and then up top we've got our expansion tank and all our drivers for our lights in this half of the unit. We were basically required to hook up to the city's services um, which is water supply, sewage and our storm water actually we had to manage it on site. So yeah the bathroom doubles as a, a walkthrough and you've got your shower and your toilet and your sink and your mechanical room all in this tiny space. It's accessible from both sides. This door here is a hinge door and then this door is a barn door that slides across. We're in the bedroom now and basically we got a queen size bed in here. Again, this bed lifts up, there's full storage underneath. We kept it pretty minimalist in here for now, uh, but this, we've brought the windows back from the corner to allow for built-in storage options there. As we're using it now, we like the openness of the shelves and we've got a half closet over here. But yeah, it, does, it feels, feels roomy in here. There's, there's a mirror on the back of the barn door here. As far as, you know, space to get changed and something to look in as you're getting changed. Um, yeah, it's got everything you need in here. That window there is a full egress window. We've got a baseboard heater in here and the HRV too. Also required by code, you've got to have one in the bedroom uh, in a space like this. So we've got one at this end and one at the other end and that's what circulates the air. They work in tandem. This bed, we've got it set up this way, but the way we've designed the plugs, we've got four plugs down there. So you can have it this way or this way, um, depending on who you are and what you prefer. In a tiny home, it all comes down to millimeters. So wherever you can maximize the use of a space and tweak things, just even if it's just by a couple of inches, it can make a big difference. So with the installation with this unit, um, we used an EPS foam, it's custom molded to the corrugations of the container. There's no air gap in there, um, which is really nice because you don't want air in, inside. And then through the floor system, we used a styrofoam floor system that ties into those walls and that ceiling. So it's a 100% air seal. The cost of that system was quite pricey. So yeah, for the next one, I think we'll probably use a spray foam system. Uh, that way we can use a local company that installs it for us and it's a job done a lot faster. It's super important to have a good air seal in, in a unit like this, especially when you're deal, dealing with a steel shell. Thermal bridging is a big issue and if you don't do it right, you can run into problems. Yeah, the main goal here was to create that continuous air seal. It kind of came up in our blower door test. Our air leakage was minimal. It's at 1.04 air changes an hour which means you need less energy to heat the space and to cool the space. Our heat source in here, we've used baseboards. We've got one small baseboard in the bedroom and we've got a kick space heater in the kitchen. So that's all you really need in a unit like this. We were required to pour a full foundation for this unit. We're really hoping that given the nature of a shipping container and the structural integrity of a shipping container, that we can somehow convince municipalities that Four points is what these things sit on and maybe four points is all they need for a foundation. Getting it through the municipality and all the red tape that comes with that um, was challenging. But now that we kind of have a system in place for that, um, we think it's going to be it's gonna, just going to get easier and easier. Yeah, I've been building for 25 years in different areas around the world. The construction I was doing was residential renovation, but the waste was just incredible. And I kind of struggled with that. So I saw this as a way of doing it in a sustainable way. I'm trying to figure out a housing solution of, of many. I'm trying to create some local jobs and it's built for life. This thing's rock solid. It's not going anywhere. Like I know when the big shaker comes, this is where I'd want to be. <laughs> You can find out more about West Coast Container Homes on their website and on Instagram. We want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. We love their VPN service and we're excited to tell you about it. 
VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a service that protects your connection while you use the internet, and it's super easy to use. I use it almost every day when I'm logging into important accounts, so I just turn it on and off whenever I need to. And the solid logo at the top of my screen makes it easy to see that I'm protected. NordVPN is awesome because they have servers in countries around the world, so you can use the internet without borders. And they don't collect or track any of your private data. Right now, they're offering a huge discount on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash exploringalternatives. And when you use our code exploringalternatives, you'll get an extra month for free. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so this is a great time to give it a try. So that link is nordvpn.com slash exploringalternatives, and the discount code to use at checkout is exploringalternatives. We'll put the link in the description below for you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.